Dreams we learn in the Quran and Sunnah can occur from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they can occur from shaitan and they can occur from your own imagination. So dreams fall into three categories. Dreams can occur from Allah and this type occurs to the prophets. They don't get the other two. It occurs to the prophets. The only type of dreams that the prophets have are from Allah. Allah has protected their dreams from shaitan and Allah has protected their dreams from their own imagination. And therefore, every time a prophet sees a dream, it is wahi, it is inspiration from Allah. Every time a prophet sees a dream, it is wahi from Allah. And we've already seen this in the family of Ibrahim before. What happens with Ibrahim Islam? He sees a dream about Ismail, that he is sacrificing him. I see in my dream that I will sacrifice you. So the Prophet Ibrahim has already told us the reality of dreams. Now his great grandson Yusuf sees a dream. So dreams are something related to the prophets of Allah, but they are not only related to the prophets. It is possible that people who are not prophets also get these types of dreams. In one hadith in Tirmidhi, the Prophet وسلم, said, لَمْ يَبْقَى مِنَ النُّبُوَّةِ إِلَّا الْمُبَشِّرَاتِ Nothing has been left of nubuwa other than mubashirat. What are mubashirat? That he was asked, what is a mubashir ya Rasulullah? So he said, a ru'ya, a dream that you see. Either you or somebody else sees you in it. You see yourself in it or somebody else sees you in it. He comes and tells you, I saw you in a dream and this is this what I saw. This is a mubashir. What does mubashir mean? It means good news. Good news. So from this, we learn that the dreams that Allah blesses a person with always have something positive. There's a positive message in what Allah tells you in your dreams. Now to talk about dreams a little bit more, we said dreams are of three types. Number one, dreams of your imagination. In Arabic, this is called hadithun nafs, comes from your imagination. So for example, one of us is wanting a very fancy car. You want to buy the latest model of the Jaguar or the Mercedes or something, right? You're thinking about it, daydreaming. You go to sleep, lo and behold, you're driving that car. Okay, this is your, this is your hadithun nafs. This is your imagination. And scientists say, this is not from scholars, but scientists say, scientists study dreams, right? There are a special group of scientists who study dreams. I find this very tickling that mashallah, if they fall asleep on the job, they're the only group of people that can say we're working while we, while we fall asleep. So there are scientists who study dreams. These scientists, they tell us that this type of dream occurs every night. There is a phase in our sleep when it's called REM, rapid eye movement. There's a phase in our sleep every single night where everybody dreams. Now the sign of this dream, you all know it. When you wake up, the dream is absolutely fresh, right? But then within five seconds, what happens? It's gone. This is the indication. This is this type of dream. It's your imagination. And external impulses affect this type of dream. External impulses, right? So if somebody throws water on your face, you're going to dream that you're drowning or something. Okay. If you hear your alarm clock go off, it will somehow affect your dream. Correct? You will, something will happen in your dream. If somebody is calling you, wake up, wake up, it's time for Fajr. You will, in your dream, it will be translated that somebody is waking you up. Correct? Right? That type of dream has nothing to do with good or bad. It's your own imagination. Hadithun nafs. And the sign of it, you don't remember it at all. You wake up and within five minutes, by, by the time it's middle of the day, you don't even remember anything about the dream. Right? This is the sign, Hadithun nafs. The second type of dream, it is called in Arabic Hulm. And Hulm is an evil dream. In English, we call it a nightmare. In English, we call it a nightmare. And these types of dreams are from shaitan. These types of dreams are from shaitan. And the sign of this dream is that it terrifies you. You see something evil, something disgusting. You see your loved one die a miserable death. You see yourself in a car accident. You see yourself being chased by evil aliens or beasts or something like this. This type of dream is just the shayateen wanting to irritate you. They're playing a joke, a practical. And 
these types of dreams are never ever ever true nobody should believe this dream nobody should believe nightmares and our prophet ﷺ said that nightmare should not be told to anybody if you see an evil dream don't go tell other people about it why because shaitan is making a fool of you once a man came to the process and he said, Oh Messenger of Allah, I saw my head got cut off in the dream and it was rolling like a ball and I'm running after it to pick it up. The Prophet ﷺ said, Don't tell other people how shaitan played with you last night. Don't go tell other people this. He's laughing now when you go tell him because you believe this dream. How, what is the sign of this type of dream? You wake up terrified. You wake up in a sweat. You wake up in the middle of the night. What was that? What, 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 how, what did I see? This is the sign. This is from shaitan. Shaitan does not know the future. So if you see yourself in a car accident and the next morning you call and say, I'm not going to go to work because I don't want to drive. Shaitan's the one laughing at you. Shaitan's the one laughing at you because you believed him. In the nightmares, you have to reject them because there is no truth, not an element of truth in them. Zero. And if you follow it and believe it, Shaitan is the one who will be the winner. A nightmare, the Prophet ﷺ said, if you wake up with that type of nightmare, you seek refuge in shaitan. Say, A'udhu Billahi min shaitan rajim And you're allowed to spit on the left hand side as you do this. And the spit that the Prophet talked about is a spit where the noise is made but nothing comes out. Like that. It's called nafath. A noise is made but no spit actually comes out. And that is to expel shaitan from you. And say, A'udhu Billahi min shaitan rajim And also the Prophet said, Whatever side you're on, turn to the other side. Why? Because shaitan while he's teasing you, he is around you or sitting on you. So when you say, A'udhu Billah, and you turn around, he has to flee and run away. And the Prophet ﷺ said, if it's really bad, then even stand up and pray to Raka'at to seek refuge in shaitan and to establish that relationship with Allah. Whatever you do, you don't tell anybody, not your loved ones, not your spouse, not your friends, nobody. These types of dreams, you leave them. Also, by the way, dreams of a vulgar nature, wet dreams, these are also from shaitan. Now, a man is not sinful or a woman is not sinful for having such dreams. However, as you all know, the fiqh is when you wake up and you find that uh, you have reached that state, then you must uh, perform an entire ghusl. That dream is from shaitan, even though there's no sin on you because you don't control your dreams. And that is why the prophets never have wet dreams. None of the prophets can have wet dreams because this is from shaitan, this extreme vulgarity that uh, it is natural. I mean, there's no reason for us to feel guilty about this. It is natural for a, a person to go through this and it is not something to feel any issue about. But we should realize that this type of dream is coming from shaitan. It's shaitan who will show us such images in our head and cause this to happen. And then we wake up in the middle of this freezing cold weather and we have to go take a shower. This, this is not something that is coming from us or from Allah. This is from shaitan. So this is another type of hulm, another type of evil dream. Once again, we don't tell people about it. We don't go tell anybody. But if we wake up in that state, obviously we have to do ghusl. So this is the second type of dream. So the first type was what? Hadith nafs The second type, nightmares from shaitan. The third type, this leaves the third type. The third type is Mubashirat or also called in Arabic Ru'ya and Ru'ya is a vision from Allah. It is a, a positive dream and no dream from Allah will cause you to awake in a frightened state. You will not wake up terrified or else it wouldn't be a Mubashir, would it? What does Mubashir mean? From Bashir, from Bashara, what does Mubashir mean? Glad tidings, good news, right? Something optimistic. Or even if it's not positive, it will be a factual statement. It will be something true and not something terrifying. Now, what is the sign of this type of dream? You will wake up remembering the dream vividly. So it's not hadith nafs And you will wake up not in a terrified state. When these two conditions are met, it is very possible, very likely that it is a Mubashir. Sometimes you wake up in a positive state because you saw something positive. And sometimes you wake up in a neutral state. You're not scared and you're not happy, but you might be confused. What did I see? But you're never going to wake up terrified. If you wake up terrified, it's not from Allah. It's from, from Shaitan. Now, dreams from Allah are one of two types. 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 The first of them, which is less common, 
The first of them, which is less common, is that you see an actual event with you in it without any symbolism. You see something that will happen in the future. You see something that will happen in the future. And there's no symbolism in it. It's a direct, if you like, if you watch, uh, if you like a, an enactment of the future. This is exactly what will happen. Okay. So the Prophet ﷺ saw a dream that he's doing tawaf around the Kaaba. What year was this? Sixth year of the Hijrah. Sixth year of the Hijrah, right? He saw a dream, he's doing tawaf around the Kaaba. So he, there is no symbolism. When, when he saw the dream, he knew this is not a symbolic dream. So he said, O oh Muslims, I saw a dream, I'm doing tawaf around the Kaaba, let's go do Umrah. What happened that year? They stopped him from coming in. And the Treaty of Hudaybiyah took place, right? With that, we will talk about perhaps maybe one, two years from now, inshallah. If Allah gives us every Wednesday to come, there'll be a long time ahead, Treaty of Hudaybiyah. Maybe even actually three or four years. But we'll get there sometime, inshallah. We'll talk about it in detail. Where the Prophet ﷺ was prevented from going into Mecca. He saw a dream. There's no symbolism. I saw myself doing tawaf and shaving my hair. This will happen. Allah said in the Quran, this dream that you saw is a true dream. You're going to enter Masjid Al Haram. It will happen. Not this year, next. It will happen next year. So, this is the first type of dream that you see an actual enactment of what will happen. This is rarer. It's rare, but it happens. It's more common to the prophets. So, Prophet, Isma, Prophet Ibrahim sees what does he see? I see myself sacrificing you. There's no symbolism. It's clear cut, right? More common to the prophets. Uh, with regards to such types of dreams, our Prophet ﷺ narrates, Aisha tells us, that for six months before the revelation of the Quran, every single night, the Prophet ﷺ would see one of these dreams. For six months, non-stop. Every time our Prophet ﷺ would go to sleep, he would dream what's going to happen tomorrow. He might be in the souq buying and selling, he dreams it. Next day, the exact same thing happens. He dreams he's going to meet somebody. Next day, that person comes, he meets him. One day, literally, 12 hours gap. He sees the dream, the next morning it happens. For six months non-stop. Why? Allah is telling him something special is going to happen. Allah is telling him something great is going to happen, preparing him for the revelation of Iqra. For six months this happens and then Iqra is revealed.